south of Russia, so we're going to Tbilisi. And I've been to an amazing uh, play with marionettes and puppets. And we're walking through the streets to the old town. And it was all built up, all brand new buildings and um, steel frames. And it was all really new and shiny. And there, nestled amongst the new builds, was this incredible old, old building. And the woman that I was with, who was a pretty good ethnomusicologist who would actually be in this country in, in August this year, stopped and in her broken English said, that's my old family home. And of course I went, oh my God, there must be a story. Tell me the story. How is it that that's, how is it it's not been raised to the ground? And so she started to tell me part of the story. And I wrote a poem and a short story. And I'd like to read you the poem first. And it's called Eracle Street. And it tells of how when they were children and played archaeology in their back garden, they would find pieces of gold. And of course, Georgia is the uh, cradle of the Greek myth, Jason and the Argonauts. So the story of the Golden Fleece starts in Georgia. So I was really intrigued by this, and I've got a few more bits out of it, so some of the poem is hers and some of it's mine, and then I'm going to read you a bit of a story. Airport Street. I remember when next door threw beautiful things into our garden. Things like golden rings inscribed with script so delicate that swan-shaped bracelets bowed reverent heads and turquoise with outstretched, outstretched limbs and emeralds for eyes played hide and seek amongst our rioting passion fruit vines. Sometimes when we played archaeologists, we unearthed golden-shaped beams amongst the wild flowers that stomped and tantrumed against the back sunlit wall. Uneven, cobbled streets were our friends. They rang out with childish laughter as we rolled our inside-outside bicycle wheels through sunshine shade, through sunshine shade, towards the river that called to us with her song. Then the communists came in the discontented winter and took my grandfather for being a good man. They left only charred papers in the burnt out grate and four women whose cracked hands bled and beat river washed wool to within an inch of its life. Stones cracked, shutters rotted, balconies crumbled, mice made homes in windowsill holes where once <coughs> were silk-spun drapes, but now wild yellow roses dwell. My poor mother slaved to feed and believed, don't yet decorum est, non est moratis. The old lie, he is not dead. Every month she sent in brown paper parcels with sorry written inside, bread from our oven, cheese from our goats, meat from the village, apples from our tree, socks knitted by guttering candlelight, and handkerchiefs made with curtains to the punishing frozen north. The first month, she sent shoes, a book of poetry, and his reading glasses, which, whilst cracked, would have to suffice. There was never any reply. As I peer now through the gaps in the demolition boards, a rumble of childhood memories goes back at me, and I see yellow roses weak and riot defiantly against the back wall in the lengthening shadow of a dying sun. When I came